Hey, what's up fams? Welcome to my brand new year and brand new thing. And I just lost eye contact with the camera lens, but whatever. Ugh, I know I'm over the place, but you know what? Let's just get started. This, real quick guys, is my top five films of 2019. So let's get started. Now, before we get to the top five list that I got, I'm gonna make some honorable mentions, so let's just get on with it real quick. Dora and the Lost City of Gold, because it was actually a damn fun movie. I really liked it, so yeah, that's an honorable mention. But again, it didn't make the list, but it was, you know, for a kiss film, it's pretty good. And stay tuned for one day, I'm gonna do a review, thorough review on it. Let's just say that I'm gonna push some boundaries. Avengers Endgame, again, I love the film a lot. It's a damn good conclusion to the Infinity Saga, but... Um, it didn't make the list because there are other films. I mean, it's not my top 10, but this is a top five. So yeah, it didn't make the top five list. So sorry, but I love these five films better, more better. Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, I loved it a bit more than the Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming, but I, I, I prefer Vulture over Mysterio. I, I love, I love Mysterio. I love Jay Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, but, uh... Vulture, Michael Keaton as Vulture is great. I mean, come on, it's Michael Keaton. You can't go wrong with that. Good Boys, really good movie, surprisingly. It's funny as hell, but then again, it kind of went to, eh, okay, we get it. You're badasses, you kids cuss a lot, so yeah, I get it. We get it, we all get it, so eh, you guys don't have to do all that stuff, so eh. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, despite, if you've seen my quick spoiler review of it, that was not very good, so ugh, sorry about that. Uh, despite my issues with it, I still enjoyed it. It's not in my top 10, but it is an honorable mention. So, um, yeah, The Rise of Skywalker, I actually quite enjoyed it. It's not as good as The Last Jedi. In my opinion, The Last Jedi was a way better film. You know, at me if you want. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, The Rise of Skywalker. Good. I like it. Good, not great, but eh. Yeah. So that is my honorable mentions. Now let's get on to the top five films that made it onto my list of 2019, folks. Starting off at number five, we got Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Yes, I love Knives Out. I actually saw it recently while there was Oscar season, I think. We have Oscar season. Is it nominated? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, Knives Out was great. Holy crap, the, the story was great. And just Ryan Johnson just subverting my expectations. I mean, I, you kind of know what's gonna, what's gonna happen. You kind of know who it is. But then again, the film plays it like, like the way, like, oh, it is or it isn't. Like, it's more like, oh, it's a crime. Like, who done it? But it isn't. But it is. But it isn't. Or like, it is a crime drama. But it is. Oh, wait. It isn't. Oh wait, oh, yes. it is a crime drama who done it, but it isn't. Or is it? It is? I don't know. Uh, one great guy that I know basically said to me who who I work with, he, he's basically like, well, at the end of the day, Ryan Johnson's like, well, who cares? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? So the message is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> But yeah, I love Knives Out. Every single performance is great. Uh, I can't, there's a lot of all-star names like Tony Collette, uh, Daniel Gregg, uh, Chris Evans, and I think her name is Ana de Alma. She's, I've seen her in Blade Runner. She's in Blade Runner 2049. And when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, she looks familiar. Her face looks familiar. But I'm like, oh, she's Ana de Alma. <laughs> Ana de Alma, my bad. I think that's how you say her name, so... Yeah, if I screwed up her name, uh, hopefully I'll put some texts around here somewhere. I'm still trying to work on that, so <laughs> yeah. But she did great, and I'm surprised she's 31. She does not look 31. I'm surprised, but hey, that's Latinas for you. They know how to keep them figures good. <laughs> but yeah, no, she's she's great, and I can't wait to see her in more stuff. Moving on to number four, we've got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino, and this film is, a, once again, no exception. And now my heater has turned on. <laughs> well, what can you do, you know? I'm shooting this at my house. This house is not really YouTube friendly, so yeah. But yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was great. The performances are great. I love how it was shot on film. It was like 65 millimeter as always, or 35 millimeter. Awesome. And I was picking between like which one should be my number four, this or Knives Out. But I, I say since I'm more keen on Quentin Tarantino more than Ryan Johnson. And I love Ryan Johnson. I'm a fan of Ryan Johnson, but... I say this one is number four for me because 
Once Upon a Time is so, like, it shows you, like, the BS of Hollywood. Like, the shit that they treat you in this environment. And just seeing, like, a once in the life, like, basically, like, an awesome <laughs> TV star and a movie star played by Leonardo DiCaprio who basically just, yeah, he's becoming a nobody because, well, they're moving on to other things or just things are changing. But then again, that's how Hollywood is. Once you're famous, sort of fills it out. They don't got... They don't want to do with you. They don't want to deal with you. And so he resorts to Spaghetti Westerns, which I love Spaghetti Westerns. You know, that's a reference to Clint Eastwood doing Spaghetti Westerns like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and for a few dollars more and a fistful of dollars. So, yeah, it's it's a nice homage and references to that. And I just really love how it was just beautifully shot. And Brad Pitt, his character, he plays a stunt double who, from what I can see, he th- he has a shit ton of issues, but hey, he's actually not a bad guy. He does a lot of badass shit in the film, so that's just great. And also, like, I'm not going to try to spoil too much of these films. I actually want you guys to see it, these films that I picked out, so yeah. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it was well acted, well shot, and Tarantino, come on, he has this you know, flavor to it. And also, Kurt Russell's one of my favorite actors of all time. Doesn't get a lot of screen time, but when he's in it, he's in it, and he is awesome. Ooh, I love Kurt Russell in this one. And the Bru- and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Bruce Lee too. And the Bruce Lee scene did not really offend me because honestly, he's a spoiler. If I'm gonna spoil anything, I'm gonna spoil this. It's just a dream sequence. So anybody who's a Bruce Lee fan that got offended by that scene, calm down. It's just a dream sequence. And come on, we kind of know who would win that fight. <laughs> so yeah, once upon a time in Hollywood, check it out. Number three, fo- oh yeah, number three. We got Alita Battle Angel. Woohoo! I've been waiting to talk about this film for a long time. Uh, next month, we're having the one year anniversary of it, and I'm gonna do a review of her very soon. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna leave mistakes in. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, Alita Battle Angel. Oh my god, Rosa Salazar. Ooh, she knocked that out of the park. The CGI looked great on her, even though. She already has big eyes to begin with in real life. You know, beautiful big eyes, mind you. Uh, man, you know, it, it just added a lot to her. Like, to her performance. <laughs> I almost broke right there, but yeah. And a lot of people, like, give James Cameron credit, which, yes, you know... Well, they give him a lot of credit, but the thing is, is that even though, like, yes, this was his baby for, like, 20 to 30 years, um, this was directed by Robert Rodriguez, and as a fellow Chicano, uh, Mexican-American like him, it's just, you know... it. I wish he got more credit for it. I mean, I know that's his, that James Cameron. That's that's also his project too. But then again, you know, Robert Rodriguez had to step in his shoes so he could do the film, and he did a damn good job. Again, great performance. The CGI looks damn good. I say it's better than Avatar. Then again, I'm, I don't like Avatar, so whatever. But it was better than Avatar. Uh, the 3D was good, and I'm not a fan of 3D, but the 3D was pretty damn good. The story was pretty decent. At well, it's great. As a standalone film, uh, is a damn good story about a girl becoming who she is meant to be. Her destiny is. And she has to choose if she wants to be that or not. And uh, how the way it ends, again, it sets up sequels. But I think, at first I thought it was kind of an issue at first. But then again, when I think about it more and more... Uh, you know, as a stand, when you I looked at it as a standalone story arc, and you know, it's pretty damn good, and I'm excited for the sequel. Which, yes, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen very soon, but hey, James Cameron did say I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna do it no matter what. I think that's what he said. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for Alita too. And my final thing that I like was a strong female character who doesn't sacrifice femininity, and that's one thing that women have over men is femininity. So I'm glad she does not sacrifice any of that. So, yeah, Alita is great. It's amazing. And also, the score is pretty damn good. I love it. I mean, I'm not huge keen on anime much, but yeah. Uh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Uh, as a guy, as a casual anime lover, liker, uh, it's damn good. <laughs> 
is damn good. Uh, I mean, I'm again, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself for the third time in a row, but yeah, I'm not keen on anime, but it's it's damn good. And uh, I love, I do love Japanese culture. I'm not a weeb though, so yeah. I I am into Jap. I love Japanese culture, but I am not a weeb, so um. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, uh, no. Alita Battle Angel, great. I love it. I love Japanese culture, and uh, yeah. Looking forward to seeing more of her in the near future. Coming in at number two, woo! Sorry that I have to scream, but I am excited to talk about this, is Joker! Ooh, man. When I first heard of they're gonna making a, eh, when I first heard they were gonna make a Joker film, I literally was just like, eh, I don't know, man, giving him an origin story, I don't know, but I felt like, you know, eh, I'll, I'll see how this goes. And even when I saw the makeup, I was not even impressed at all. So, I mean, it, I was impressed later, because it kind of grew on me, but as I watched the film for the first time, it really, like, ooh, it, it got me good. Uh, there was actually a moment where, like, I had to, like, because I saw it at Adobe, I really, there was a moment where I really wanted to, like, go to the bathroom, and but be, but I wanted to go to the projector and be like, hey, can you pause this movie real quick, because I don't want to miss anything, it's because... It's not, it's not the violence that got to me, it's just the mental illness stuff that was getting to my head, and I'm just like, it's not that it's a, you know, like... It's not that it was, like, turning me violent, no, it's not, nothing like that, no, it's not, of course not, but it was just making me feel a little uncomfortable, because it's... The way how it deals with mental illness is just very realistic, and I've never seen it done like that. It's like, if instant family, like, can do, like, foster adoption in a realistic way... Joker does mental illnesses like depression and narcissism and suicidal thoughts in a realistic way. Because, holy crap, it, uh, it kind of, ooh, it just makes you uncomfortable with a lot of scenes. And Joaquin Phoenix, of course, man. Currently, he's my favorite live-action Joker right now. I love him. He's great. And Robert De Niro, ooh, kills it every time. So, yeah, Joker, I love it. Also, it was shot great, beautifully, and I love how... Just, it was just well-directed, and man, Todd Phillips, man, you, man, you, this dude stepped out from, he just came from doing comedy films, and now he's doing serious films like these, so, I can't wait to see more Todd Phillips, so that, that's great. Joker, go see it! And coming in at number one, and you, uh, <laughs> and coming in at number one, y'all know what film I'm gonna talk about, and it is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And I'm just gonna repeat myself this time. I love how this is like a passion project. I can tell the camera quality was great. Oh, the camera shots were great. The acting was good, no matter what people say. Uh, Godzilla is great, and the action is just great. As a Godzilla fan, it's basically like a dream to see something like this on the big screen. Gareth Edwards set up a damn perfectly great film to watch. <laughs> I can't believe I stuttered right there or like hesitated. No, not hesitated, but more like. Like, pause real quick, like, oof, I just need to take a breath. Uh, and Michael Dory just expanded on it, and I can't wait for this year's Godzilla vs. Kong. I can't really say much about this film, uh, because what hasn't been said about this film, that hasn't, you know, been praised enough about it, or criticized about it, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Godzilla King of the Monsters, what can I say, the cinematography is great, the score is great, the acting is great. The kaiju action is great, and just the story, it really, when you, when I, I would, when I, if you would watch this film, it's not that it's, it has no story, it's just that the story just takes a back seat, but it doesn't mean, in my opinion, it doesn't mean that it's bad. So, yeah, um, I will do a thorough, like, spoiler heavy review very soon of it. I'm gonna review it in 4K with, hopefully, with my boy Marcus very soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, there's not much I can say right now about it. It's just, you know, I still want you guys to see it. I don't want to spoil nothing. So yeah, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters is my number one film of 2019. So there you have it. That is my quick top five films of 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like to see more of this content, make sure you guys hit the, uh, make sure you guys hit the describe, subscribe button. Make sure you also leave a like or dislike if, I don't know if you dislike this video and leave a comment. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. So this is Hobby from Hobby Productions. Did it later? But yeah. Signing off, and I hope you guys enjoy the show.